A number of clergymen representing pastors against closure of churches with police during their peaceful protest in Cape Town on Friday. We are going to send a message to all of you. You're not going to provoke us and you're not going to arrest any of our pastors when they protest. Should any of you do that, we're not going to sue the state. We'll sue your pension fund individually. Yes. Because we are tired of you provoking the church. Yeah. We did yes. that in Cebu game. You arrested Pastor Radebe like he's a bag of, of potatoes. Yes. Yes. And we sue, we launch a lawsuit yeah, against you of 2.5, of 3.5 million. Yes. And you're going to pay it and you'll continue paying. And those police who arrested him were swearing at him. We deal with them individually as we speak. And let me tell you, if you think that you're only part Relax, relax. If you think we're only pastors because we read the Bible and we preach in church, I'm a fan of Faith Family Fellowship in Pretoria. And let me tell you, I'm an advocate. I, we are not scared of you. We know the law inside out. And no one will stop us. If you want to pass here, we'll pass. You're not going to stop us. We respect your uniform and your office. Don't push us to be tired. We don't want to be tired. And pastors, let me tell you something. If we don't stand radically for the church, if we don't stand radically for the kingdom of God, we will be disrespected by this government. We will be disrespected by this antichrist people who are making laws that are against God every day. They say if the government does not listen to their plight within seven days, they will intensify their campaign nationwide. Should they not give us what we want? Should they not give us what we want? We're going to take another action. We are mobilizing at national level. We have pastors who are supporting this all over the country. We have pastors in Mafikeng, we have pastors in Rustenberg, Polokwane, Mukopane, Nelspray, Mpumalanga, Eppington, Kimbali. In all the bigger cities of this country, they are there. If they don't give us what we want, we tell them that we're going to keep this country to be very slow for one or two days. So let them do what we are asking now and come and sit down with us and talk to us. We cannot allow ourselves to be represented by SACC. Ah, ah, SACC, they never build churches. Yes. They inherited churches that were built in 18th century. Yes. We are the ones who know what is a church because we build churches. Yes. SACC, they inherited the Lutheran church from yeah. England or yes. wherever, or the Methodist church from Netherlands. Yes. We build churches from the start. Yes. We know what it means to sweat yes. out and bleed for the church. The pastor's numbering about 100 were prevented by the police from going ahead, stating that a Disaster Management Act prohibits any form of protests. When they were finally given the go-ahead, they marched the streets and expressed their frustration. The pastors say they are unhappy about the president's proposal of 50 people attending church services and under strict regulations. We've got big churches in this country. How are you going to work with uh, 50 people if you've got 2,000 and yet you've got a building. Remember these buildings are not for free. They are paid by churches. Churches pay this building. Some will pay 100,000 and then how do you pay for a building that you are not using? A church is spending and paying rates, paying water and so on for buildings that you are not using because it's unworkable to work with 50 people. We are saying government has to consider give 50% of, 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 of the pair building capacity, that's the most reasonable thing to do. Your freedom of, 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 of religion cannot be taken under this law. We say it's an error in law, and we are calling upon the defenders of the constitution to speak up and say this cannot be, that churches are closed. What government should do, it should partner with the church and say, okay, uh, what can we do? The marketplace. If that place can be essential, why can't the church be essential? Because when there's a funeral, they need the church. If there's anything today, then they need the church, but the church is closed. And there's people that are suffering out there that needs the church to open because the church gives counseling. Spokesperson for the pastors against closure of churches, Mo Africa Wamaila, says the church cannot be bullied by government anymore and that the church needs respect. Uh, we must make it clear, very much clear, that we cannot allow ourselves to continue to be bullied as the church. Yes. We have been bullied for too long, yes. and this is the time that we must stand up and radically restore the shape and the dignity of the church. Yes. Because everything that has been happening in our country, the church being sidelined all along, but towards election, that's where they come and jump and talk to us. We must begin to address them that enough with that attitude. Yes. He called for the church to unite and form a common front. 
and these divisions no, of the Pentecostal and charismatic churches must come to an end. Yeah. This is the time that we unite. Yeah. This is the time that we become yeah. one Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you something. We have bigger numbers. We have many people. Yes. Our problem is our division. We are starting our unity now. No. I urge you Cape Town. I urge you Western Cape. Let us unite everywhere in South Africa. Let us move forward in power, in force, and make sure that we claim our rightful place in this country. We are called to govern. Therefore, we shall be the governance as our God is God who said the will must be done here.